This video explains the eight steps of TB patient-centered treatment. Step one, inform the patient about TB. The first step is to inform the patient about the results of the tuberculosis diagnosis. Start with explaining the symptoms, causes and mode of transmission of TB to the patient. Also, mention association between TB and HIV AIDS and other diseases. Even if the patient is co-infected with HIV AIDS, TB is still curable. And underline that TB is curable and that the treatment is available free of charge. Inform the patient that once he or she is under treatment, food, drinks and beds can be shared with other family members. Step 2. Explain directly observed treatment short course to the patient. Explain the treatment regimen to the patient. The normal TB treatment takes six months. During the intensive phase of two months, four pills, each containing four different types of drugs, have to be taken daily in the morning. During the continuation phase of four months, four smaller pills, each containing two different types of drugs, have to be taken daily in the morning. Stress that he or she must take the therapy every day for the whole six months to ensure cure and prevent drug resistance. Underline that somebody must observe the daily intake. Step 3. Explain the options of patient-centered treatment. Outline to the patient that he or she can take the therapy either at a health facility observed by a healthcare worker or at home observed by a family or community member. Give the patient up to two weeks time to think about the two options and choose a reliable and trustworthy treatment supporter if he or she chooses home-based treatment. Also explain to the patient that he or she must come back to the health facility every day for treatment unless he or she has opted for home-based treatment and has already identified a reliable treatment supporter. Step 4. Prepare the TB treatment and identity cards and start the treatment. After explaining the options, fill out patient's TB treatment and identity cards and choose the TB treatment category. Select appropriate treatment regimen at correct dosage and interval according to body weight. After that, you administer the first drugs to the patient. Ensure to explain possible drug side effects to the patient and stress the importance of continuing taking the daily medicines. The patient will then go home and discuss the two treatment possibilities with his or her family. Supporting the patient is an important decision. The treatment supporter should realize that it is a big responsibility. Step 5. Explain home-based treatment to both treatment supporter and patient. In this case, the patient has opted for home-based treatment. When the patient comes back with his or her treatment supporter, inform both about TB and how it is treated. Then, write the name and contact details of the treatment supporter on the treatment card and give him or her the patient's identity card. Also, show the treatment supporter how to fill in the identity card. Demonstrate to the treatment supporter how to supervise the daily intake of the therapy. Explain to both treatment supporter and patient that during the intensive phase of two months, the treatment supporter and, if possible together with the patient, has to come back once every week with the empty blister packs and collect the new drugs. 
During the continuation phase of four months, the treatment supporter and the patient have to come to the health facility after every two weeks with empty blister packs to collect new drugs. Always ask whether both the patient and the treatment supporter have understood your explanations. At home, the treatment supporter observes the daily intake of TB drugs and motivates the patient to comply with the treatment. <sighs> Step 6. Check records and empty blister pack during follow-up visits. When the patient and treatment supporter come back for a follow-up visit, check drug intake records on the identity card and compare with the empty blisters. Then you update the treatment card by copying the entries from the identity card. After that, you provide the treatment supporter with new blister packs for one week during the intensive phase or for two weeks during the continuation phase. Contact the treatment supporter or patient if he or she does not show up to collect new drugs. Step 7. Explain continuation phase to the treatment supporter and patient. When a former smear negative patient has completed the intensive phase, explain to him or her how the treatment works during the continuation phase. For former smear positive patients, take a sputum sample. If smear positive patients are now smear negative, they can continue with the continuation phase. If smear positive patients are still positive, they have to prolong the intensive phase by one month. If after an additional month, the patient is still smear positive, he or she nevertheless starts the continuation phase. In this case, send a sputum sample for sensitivity testing to the reference laboratory. Also, re-emphasize to patient and treatment supporter to continue with directly observed treatment. Inform facility-based treatment patients that they can switch to home-based treatment during the continuation phase. At the end of the continuation phase, take another sputum follow-up sample of former smear-positive patients. Step 8. Congratulate the patient and treatment supporter. At the end of treatment after six months, congratulate the patient and in the case of home-based treatment, his or her treatment supporter and make the outcome on the treatment card. This is the eighth and last step. And always remember, use a simple language when speaking to the patient and the treatment supporter. Give the patient and treatment supporter chance to ask questions and utter concerns. Probe proactively for patients and treatment supporters' understanding of TB treatment and problems the patient may have encountered with the therapy.